KITTY! <laughs> K-I-T-I And today, we're at La Cité de l'Espace in France And we're gonna go Oh, so very, 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 very far away Oh wait, I need to refuel my rocket first Be right back Ooh, My hat Here we are, 400 kilometers above planet Earth, on the ISS. Whee! Now, the ISS, or the International Space Station, has on board astronauts who do research on the effect of weightlessness on the human body. And also from here, they have a great view of planet Earth. And you can see the ice melting and the effect of pollution on our planet. Because you see, just like us, our planet can be sick and it's up to us to make it feel better. Would you like to see the planet from the ISS? Trust me, it's mind-blowing. Built in 1998, this is the ISS. ISS stands for International Space Station. It weighs 420 tons and is powered by solar panels. The station moves aloft at a speed of 27,700 kilometers an hour, circling the Earth 16 times in a day. Wow! It is currently 110 meters long, 74 meters wide, and 30 meters high. That's about the size of a soccer field. Wow! There are an average of 10 astronauts living there, some of whom have stayed for over a year to prepare for future manned space missions, or even the colonization of other planets, such as Mars. Astronauts of many different nationalities work side by side inside the station, as the aim is to advance knowledge for the whole planet and not just for one particular country. For some years now, engineers have been developing technologies in order to set up bases on Mars. But why do we call Mars the Red Planet? Well, it's because on the surface of Mars, you have many, many, many rocks filled with iron and iron rusts over time, just like, well, a bike would if left under the rain for too long. And rust is red. And so it gave this color to the soil and the atmosphere. But the thing is, Mars is kind of far away, more than 225 million kilometers away. So if you want to go there, you need to be prepared. You don't want to go to Mars and then realize that you forgot your toothbrush or, or your teddy bear. Oh no. So that's why we have plans to set up bases on the moon first in order to prepare ourselves. And the moon is only three days away. And here at La Cité de l'Espace in Toulouse, we can show you how they could look like. Let me show you. We're in a shuttle on approach. That means we're gonna dock on a lunar base. Magnificent! Now. <laughs> so 
So, 50 years ago, men couldn't stay very long on the surface of the moon because it's harsh. So, you know, we need to build a lunar base in order to survive and provide the necessities and experience we need to go into the universe, but also to explore other planets. And this might be how it looks like. Ooh. Isn't that fun? Oh, wow. So, those camps will be built with lunar vehicles, which will help us do some research and build properly. Yes, it could look like this. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe you'd be one of the lucky ones to actually get to go on the moon and build a new society. Isn't that exciting? Ooh, yeah. Whoa! Now, this rock here came from the moon. It was brought back during the Apollo 15 mission in 1971. And settling on the moon is just the first step on our journey to Mars. To prepare for man's arrival on Mars, numerous probes have been sent to gather scientific data. Launched by rockets, they cross our solar system to arrive on Mars, the Red Planet. These probes include the American rovers Curiosity in 2012, Perseverance and Ingenuity in 2020, the probes have to be very robust to withstand not only the journey but also the landing on Mars. They have a lot to do once they arrive. The nature of the atmosphere, storms, temperature, the nature of the soil and the presence or absence of water on Mars are data that only robotized vehicles called probes are able to collect. I'll show you how they work. Now, here we are in a unique place. This is a reproduction of a Martian crater. It looks just like a crater you would find on the surface of Mars. Now, Mars is a big, rocky desert. I mean, it's dry, it's sandy, it's just overall so, so, so empty and there's no vegetation, there's no animals, there's no life form, there's no life. Oh, honestly, it doesn't sound very appealing. Quite the opposite. Sounds appalling. This year is the Perseverance rover. It's the fifth rover to land on Mars and it arrived on the 18th of February 2021. It's an American rover and it weighs about one ton. Woo! And it's a six-wheel drive. However, it's even slower than the Zurong rover, as it only moves one meter per minute. That's 60 meter in an hour. Wow, that's slow. I mean, I'm not shaming you. But like, one meter in a minute? I did it in a second. The average temperature on Mars is minus 63 degrees Celsius. So it's minus 10 during the day and minus 90 during the night. <laughs> Talk about being cold. So just like us, the rover needs to warm up before doing anything. And we can control it from Earth. However, the information takes anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes to reach it. That's really slow. Hello. Oh. He's warming up, he's stretching, you know, just like in the morning you. Mm. 
Its mission is to photograph the environment with its 21 cameras, analyze rocks, search for possible traces of past life, like Martian microbes, and prepare samples for return to Earth. It is equipped with a laser for rock analysis. It's very powerful and can penetrate rock. Watch a laser in action. So, how do we make a rock analysis with a laser? Luckily for me, I have a friend who can help out with that. Hey, Cyan. Hi, Kitty. How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm fine. Great. So, as you can see, he has a balloon and a laser. He's going to point the balloon on the laser and we'll see what happens. I have glasses to protect my eyes because lasers are dangerous. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> ah. Wow, that was impressive. And this laser is teeny weeny. The Perseverance laser is 10 million times more powerful than that one. And if a rock analysis is deemed of interest, then the robotic arm will take a sample. Luckily, Perseverance is very well equipped, thanks to its articulated arm and its many instruments. Neat! Hello! Oh! Here is what Perseverance collects for sample. It will leave them on the ground on Mars and they will be recovered in 2030. Wow! Can I see? Yes, you can. It looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> Perseverance also dropped on the surface of Mars another robot, Ingenuity, the first extraterrestrial robot. And it's right there. Hello. Spin. Well then, my little kitty kids, it's time for the kitty quiz. We learned a lot. Now let's see what you remember. Okay, first question. What is the ISS? Is it A, a petrol station, or B, a space station? Timer. What is the ISS? Ah, time's up. So, let's hear your answer. That's right, the ISS is a space station. Space. S. P. A. C. E. Station. S. T. A. T. I. O. N. Congratulations! But we're not done yet. There's a second question. Are you ready? Great! So, what is Mars called? Is it A, the pink polka dot planet, or B, the red planet? Timer. What is Mars called? I don't know. I just don't. Ah, time's up. Let's hear your answer. I, d I don't have an answer, I'll be honest. But well, maybe you're right. What's your answer? That's right, Mars is also called the Red Planet. The Red Planet. Red. R. E. D. Planet. P. L. A. N. E. T. <laughs> Yay! Are you ready now for the last question? What do we use to go to space? Do we A use a rocket or B use a balloon? Timer. The question is, what do we use to go to space? Ah, time's up. So, let's hear your answer. That's right, to go to space we use a rocket. Congratulations! A rocket. R O C K E T. Congratulations, you got all the right answer to the kitty quiz. And you know what that means now. It's time for the kitty dance. Let's go. 